Hello my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here with Awful Creativity and today we're talking about sewable fall fashion trends. A fashion statement if you will that you can actually sew yourself that's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg and also a lot of these are really simple in construction so if I can do it then you can do it for sure. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Now here I've selected some of the fabrics for each of the categories so that way you and I can get inspired together. The first category is going to be jackets of course it has to be we're talking about fall season what better topic is than layering but since I will be showing some inspiration pictures from runways and ready-to-wear shops I want to take a moment to remind you that you have that unique and beautiful ability to make something wonderful just for yourself something super unique so although I will be showing some inspiration pictures that's just that that's just for inspiration and in no shape or form um, I, I want to inspire inspire you to make something just because it's deemed fashionable. This is not how I make stuff for myself. This is not something that I would wish for anybody because I know what happens after. We never wear those things because they don't fit us. So I just wanted to take a moment to say that truly you are you, so you do you and make what's right for you. And jackets let's talk about them so number one bomber jackets are definitely making its comeback in a slightly oversized version too which i can't really say that i'm a super huge fan of will i be making one for myself nah that's a big question probably not but for those who do want to make one for yourself i've been thinking about it and i think the heavier fabric the heavier material that these are made from like leather or faux leather might present a little bit of a challenge especially when you're not used to working with these type of materials on a regular basis and you know your sewing machine might not like it either so i actually went through my stash and i found this faux suede that i bought last year from hobby lobby and i do intend to use it for a jacket not for a bomber jacket just for a jacket but then I thought you know what let me show this to you because this is such a nice sort of like in between uh, as a substitute to those fabrics that you perhaps see in the ready to wear shops or in a runway this also stretches a little bit which might provide you more comfort in your garment and here's another thing a lot of these jackets we see with a sudden sleeve and if you've never made a jacket with a sudden sleeve that might be something that you are scared of and do you remember there was a time when bomber jackets were largely made as a reglan sleeve well nobody says that you can't do it that way either right so I do have quite a few tutorials on how to draft a reglan top and a lot of these bomber jackets are just literally glorified sweatshirts so you will see ribbing over here you will also see ribbing on cuffs and ribbing on the bottom with a zipper in the middle so it really is super easy peasy you just draft a reglan top with a, enough ease because remember you have to have layers underneath you're not gonna you know wear your bomber jacket on uh, on nothing so you have to remind yourself about that but other than that it should be a really easy job to do another type of jacket that I see specifically popular in a sewing niche is a quilted jacket which really reminds me of Dolly Spartan's uh, coat of many colors and I personally I don't necessarily think that I would actually make a jacket out of an existing quilt I would probably create a quilt like panel for the jacket but in this case I think it's more of a uh, technique rather than the style of the jacket itself so you can really take any pattern for a jacket and make it as a quilted jacket which could be really interesting and more importantly really warm during fall and winter season all of that to say I think I'm more of a fan of a classic iteration of a jacket with some sort of interesting and unique element to it. As an inspiration on a runway you could see really interesting details and otherwise quite simple jackets you know you could see different materials used together you could see some embellishments and when you're sewing at home even a simple detail like for example a, a unique or more interesting zipper will do the trick so you don't necessarily have to go all out it could be a subtle detail like that that will add more style and more uniqueness to your garment so over the last couple of months I think you've noticed on the channel I've made quite a few jackets and each one of them was 
not necessarily super duper unique, but it definitely had an interesting element to it. Like the most recent one was a denim jacket that I made from two old skirts and it had a pleated panel, which I think looks really nice and I will be wearing the heck out of it this fall. So think about elements like that. And uh, before that, I made a jacket out of neoprene, which is also another interesting fabric and material to use in your jackets for fall season. It holds shape, it doesn't necessarily require lining if you live in a climate where you can get away without warmer lining inside of your jacket. So think about those things. Again, I will leave the resources for you guys in the info box below. From the fabrics that I have here, this bottom one, the salmon pink one, is wool boucle from Mood Fabrics. This dusty rose one is faux stretch suede from Hobby Lobby that I got last year. And the top one is corduroy that I got from Hobby Lobby as well. And each one of these is going to make a fine garment for fall season. And I am ready to move on onto the fuzzy side of the fall season. There's an extra one. Here you go. You know, I think that once this sort of like grandpa style cardigan entered the fashion world and never really left, <laughs> which is great. I actually love that kind of style of a cardigan. We do see some sort of variations on the runways and in ready to wear shops, but to me, it, it seems very much the same that we've been seeing for the last couple of years. And knitwear is great for fall season. It's warm, it's comfortable, it's cozy. And on my personal sewing list, I have a couple of garments that are oversized, which we see a lot on runways, and a couple of garments that are a little bit more fitted. So for the oversized idea, this is actually a ready-to-wear sweater that was passed down from my mom. This is from an H&M, and uh, this is really oversized and I've been wearing the heck out of it for the last couple of fall winter seasons and I would like to copy that which is basically just four large rectangles and I do have a very similar tutorial for a sweater like that on the channel. Now for another idea for my sewing to-do list is a cardigan, a bow cardigan that I made a couple years ago but this time I actually want it to be a little bit more cropped and maybe, just maybe, I will add some buttons to the front so that way it can close up instead of tying it together. So that's on my to-do list as well. And a third idea that I have for you is taking a page from the previous trend that we spoke of, which was jackets with unique element, and I would invite you to also apply this to your knitwear. So knitwear with some sort of unique elements to it. I actually just recently made this sweater where the body is made from knit, but the sleeves are made from embroidered organza. I can tell you I love it. It seemed from the comments that you really loved it as well. Besides, you can use fabric remnants or whatever you have left for the project like that because you can combine fabrics together and it definitely makes a very unique piece that is truly you. And in a sense, it's still knitwear, still great for fall. Shops right now are doing a great job at stocking really beautiful knitwear and fuzzy fabrics. This one is actually not a knitwear, this is a faux fur. It does stretch, I got it from Mood Fabrics last year. This one is Sherpa, I got it from Hobby Lobby. Super soft and fun, can you imagine a really nice cozy sweater from this and this was from fabric.com this is the same knitwear sweater sweater wear that i used for my bow cardigan just in a different color all right we have wrapped it up with the knits the next style that i see appear on runways quite a bit is the sort of like classy preppy style and with that a lot of different variations of the classic white shirt, including the oversized version, and a classic shirt with a twist. Everything is today with a twist, right? With some sort of unique detail. And you don't necessarily need much for that. You just take your bodice block, or maybe a blouse or a shirt pattern, and you can add an interesting element in form of a different sleeve, or maybe some pleating, or maybe some tucks, or maybe some ruching, or maybe an interesting tie like this one. So for example, this was always also a video. Um, it's made really simply. You'll be surprised how simple it's made, but you can make it in white, let's say white poplin or maybe um, white satin, something a little bit more flowy and wear it underneath a jacket or underneath a sweater that has a really wide neckline and it will look really nice. 
for this next trend, I don't necessarily have the happiest of the fabric selections or uh, in terms of colors. These are actually bottom weights. These are suiting. I don't necessarily plan to make my wide leg pants, which have been really popular, as I'm sure you've noticed, for last couple of seasons out of this particular fabric. But I do want to make another pair. Now, recently I made uh, wide leg pants out of linen, dark blue linen, and another pair out of striped linen. But linen to me screams summer all the way through. And so I would like wide leg pants exactly the same, but out of something that's a little bit heavier. And we see a ton of wide leg pants on the runways as well. And I think that there's something really beautiful about wide leg pant paired with the white shirt that we just spoke about in the previous strand and with the jacket. It just looks really nice. My personal style is quite basic with some unique elements. So that definitely speaks really, really well to me. So that's on my sewing list. And I think that's a very very sewable fashion trend. This next fashion trend for fall season I think is super sewable, super wearable, and I'm really excited about it. Now, I don't necessarily think that I will be making one of these, but you never know, maybe I will. And that is to make a maxi skirt to go over the boots and to wear it like that. And one of the reasons why I'm really excited about it is because when I think about fall, I don't necessarily think about fabrics like chiffon or silk or satin. I think about fabrics that are a lot heavier than that. But this particular sort of like style movement definitely allows us, not necessarily allows us, but kind of pushes us to use those fabrics because it's all about being romantic. It's all about those floral patterns and your maxi skirt. And it's all about that movement when you walk. And you can opt for sort of like dusty florals or in the colors of fall. Or you can go for something like a stripe, for example, which would elongate. Or something really bold and colorful like that to sort of like add a punch of color to your wardrobe. Or you can also go for something with a sparkle too. A lot of possibilities. And this is such a sewable trend. I mean, it's just a rectangle of fabric that you cinch in at the waist, either with elastic or with the waistband and a zipper. And a tutorial on how to make these skirts, you will find in the info box below underneath this video. Well, with that, I truly hope that you can add something beautiful to your wardrobe without breaking a bank because you can create something beautiful and unique just for yourself. Now, if you want to know how I create my own clothes, then go ahead and click on this video right over here. It will show you how I made this blouse from a vision that was in my head all the way up to the finished garment. So definitely click right over here. I'll see you in that video. And until next time, happy, thoughtful song. I'll see you soon. Bye.